So in this one, Anna dives into a pool off of a springboard high dive. Her height in meters above the water, x seconds after diving, is modeled by this equation. So let's make sure we understand the variables. h of x, that's our height, and it's in meters above the water. So she's diving off a springboard into a pool. So if we draw our diving board here, she's up here, and she's going to dive off. And we'll get projectile motion since she's going to be traveling through the air. And projectile motion we know is parabolic. So that's why you get this kind of quadratic equation. So h of x, that's her height. So that's our vertical axes. And then our horizontal axes, x, that's our time. So x is time. And that's going to be in seconds again. So we need to answer the question, how many seconds after diving will... And it hit the water. So that's essentially, if we want to answer that question, that is right here. What is the time for her to actually hit the water? So we can ask ourselves, what is the key feature of our, of our equation when she actually hits the water? So at that point, we don't know the x value. That's what we're trying to find, how many seconds it took her to actually reach this water. But at this point, we do know the height, since the height of the water level is 0. So in this case, our function h of x is equal to 0. And so we can set our equation equal to 0 and then solve. So let's do that right here. We have that h of x is 0, and this is equal to minus 5 times x plus 1 times x minus 3. And since this is equal to 0, we can use our 0 product property. Since if either of these factors here, these binomials, are equal to 0, then you have 0 times something, but 0 times anything is 0. So we need to figure out which x values can we plug in here and here to make these sets of parentheses 0. If you plug in negative 1 here, this would be 0, and 0 times anything is 0, so we don't have to go any further. So x is negative 1, and if you plug in 3 here, 3, times, 3 minus 3 is 0, and so 0 times whatever would still give you 0. So minus 1 and 3 are the two answers. But one of those answers doesn't make sense. Since the time is her seconds after diving. So if you had a negative amount of time, that's talking about before she dove. And we don't have any information about that. So that is not part of our domain here. We're not going to include negative values of time. So that only leaves one answer. That 3 or at three seconds is when she hits the ground. Now you can check this, plug in three to your height equation here, or the equation that models height, and notice you get minus five times by three plus one is four, times by three minus three, which is zero, and zero times minus 20 is zero. So when you check it, when you plug in an x value of three seconds, you do see that the height does give you back zero. So that's a height or a time of three seconds to reach a height of zero or to reach her hitting the water. So let's do one final question. And in this one, Simon has 160 meters of fencing to build a rectangular garden. The garden's area in square meters as a function of the garden's width in meters is modeled by this equation. What width will produce the maximum garden area? So let's make sure we understand our variables before we try and solve this. So a of x, our function, this is just the garden's area. So the garden's area and area is in square meters. And then x is the width of the garden and that's gonna be just in meters. So in general, if we were to sketch this equation out, let me just rewrite the equation. So the area as a function of the width of the garden is minus x times x minus 80. And we're not going to talk about where this equation comes from, but it does actually make sense. And when we graph this, basically at zero width, 
you're not going to have any area because that's essentially just a line worth of your garden. It won't be thick at all. So at zero width, it'll have zero area. And then it'll slowly go up as the width increases. It'll eventually hit a maximum and then come back down. And if your width is 80, then you don't have any room left for the length of the garden. And so it, again, it just be a straight line, just perpendicular to the last one. So at a width of 80, again, it's going to be zero for the area. But to make sense of that with the actual numbers, you can use the zero product property because we do want to know these intercepts. Because if we know these intercepts, then we can find the maximum garden area because we want to find this vertex here to figure out that maximum area. And to figure out the vertex, we'll use symmetry because both of these intercepts are an equal distance away from the vertex. So if we can figure out this value and this value, then we can just average them to find the x value of the width that produces this maximum area. And they are not concerned with what the actual maximum area is. They just want to know what width would actually produce that. So to find these intercepts, remember, this is just when your function or your area is equal to zero. So which width values would give you an area equal to zero? So we can set this equal to zero and then use our zero product property. So you can see that in this case, if you plug in 80 here, you get 80 minus 80, which is zero times negative 80, but that's zero. And if you plug in zero here, you have zero times by negative 80, but that's also zero. So 80 and zero are the two intercepts. So this one here is at zero. This is at a width of 80 meters. And so right between them, you can add them and divide by two, but that would be a width of 40 meters. So at 40 meters of width, the maximum garden area would be produced. And notice this is just a little bit extra, but you had 160 meters total. So if you were producing this rectangular garden, and one side was 40, while the other would have to be 40 since it's rectangular. And then there's only 80 left total, which has to be divided between the two. So that means these would also have to be 40. So the area of this garden that produces the maximum, or the maximum area is when the garden is a square. So this problem actually does come up from time to time. But if you're ever considering how to maximize the space of some rectangular plot, if you make it into a square, you actually get the most area for a given amount of fencing, let's say.